Throughout history, humankind has been obsessed with the idea of higher beings or gods watching over us. For as long as history can stretch, there are tales of gods and messengers from the gods telling us that we humans should follow certain ideas in the struggle to become more intelligent. It is entirely possible we are being guided on a certain path for a particular purpose. Throughout history, we have made quantum leaps in understanding, from technology to science and creation. Certain people on this planet have, at certain intervals in time, have had a eureka moment, a sudden realization that has awakened people across the planet and greatly enhanced our abilities to understand creation. But what if the gods were, in fact, otherworldly beings watching over their creation or experiment? Are they protecting us on Earth in order for us to fulfill our true destiny? We call these beings the Watchers, and they have been witnessed by millions of people across the globe for hundreds of years now. There is even a very special depiction in a famous painting dating back hundreds of years that cannot be explained to be anything other than a UFO. We thought you guys would like a change of content, so we've compiled a list of alien encounters as witnessed by government officials. We hope you will enjoy the show. Wait till you hear this. At number five on our list is the Foo Fighters of World War II. The first sightings occurred in November 1944, when pilots flying over Germany by night reported seeing fast-moving, round, glowing objects following their aircraft. The objects were variously described as fiery and glowing red, white, or orange. Some pilots described them as resembling Christmas tree lights and reported that they seemed to toy with the aircraft, making wild turns before simply vanishing. Pilots and aircrew reported that the objects flew in formation with their aircraft and behaved as if under intelligent control, but never displayed hostile behavior. The phenomenon was so widespread that the lights earned a name. In the European theater of operations, they were called Kraut Fireballs, but for the most part called Foo Fighters. The military took the sightings seriously, suspecting that the mysterious sightings might be secret German weapons, but further investigation revealed that German and Japanese pilots have reported similar sightings. To this day, it is completely unexplained and officially listed as unidentified flying objects. Could this have been a case of alien contact? No one has any plausible explanation for this phenomenon. In at number four, the Rendlesham Forest UFO encounter. This stunning case of alien contact has been dubbed Britain's Roswell. The Rendlesham Forest incident, which took place in December 1980, continues to fascinate UFO enthusiasts and conspiracy theorists around the world. It is one of the most stunning encounters and it has been better documented than most cases. In the early hours of December 26, 1980, US military personnel spotted strange lights above Rendlesham Forest in England. One of these men, John Burroughs, accompanied by his superior and one other individual, went to investigate the blue, red, orange, and white lights. In his subsequent witness statement published in 1981, Burroughs explains, As we went down to the East Gate Road and the road that leads into the forest, the lights were moving back and they appeared to stop in a bunch of trees. Also, the woods lit up and you could hear the farm animals making a lot of noises. There was a lot of movement in the woods. All three of us hit the ground, and whatever it was started moving back towards the open field. We got up to the fence that separated the trees from the open field. You could see the lights down by the farmer's house. We climbed over the fence and started walking towards the red and blue lights, and they just disappeared. Jim Penniston, who accompanied Burroughs into Rendlesham Forest on December 26, claims to have encountered a craft covered in hieroglyphic-like characters. I estimated it to be about 3 meters tall and about 3 meters wide at the base. Penniston later explained, No landing gear was apparent, but it seemed like she was on fixed legs. I moved a little closer. I had already taken all 36 pictures of my roll of film. I walked around the craft, and finally I walked right up to the craft. I noticed the fabric of the shell was more like a smooth, opaque black glass. Jim Penniston claims to have had a sort of download of binary code direct to his mind upon touching the hieroglyphs on this craft. Was it some sort of ancient alien craft? much like the Black Knight satellite? Whatever they witnessed, it has stayed with them every day from that moment to the present. Their lives were never the same again. In at number three on our list, Paul Heller. Paul Heller is a former defense minister that has accused world leaders of concealing the presence of aliens here on Earth. He was the Canadian minister in charge of defense from 1963 to 1967. He claims to have been in the presence of extraterrestrial beings during this time. 
Paul is now urging world leaders to release hidden data on UFOs. He claims that the aliens have been visiting our planet for thousands of years and are unimpressed with how we live. The former Canadian defense minister declared on Russian TV that aliens were walking among us, but he said that they were refusing to share their advanced technologies until we change our polluting and warring ways. He told Russia's Today program, Sofiko, there are 80 different species of extraterrestrials, some of whom look just like us, and they could walk down the street and you wouldn't know if you walked past one. In the bizarre interview, Heller made a series of pronouncements about aliens, which grew increasingly outlandish and sounded closer to the plot of a sci-fi movie. We have a long history of UFOs, and of course there has been a lot more activity in the last few decades since we invented the atomic bomb, he said. And it affects not just us, but other people in the cosmos. They're very much afraid that we might be stupid enough to uh, start using atomic weapons again, and this would be very bad for us and uh, for them as well. And at number two, Phil Snyder. Another jaw-dropping case of a government official who just had enough of the secrecy. For two years prior to his apparent assassination, Philip Snyder had been on a lecture tour talking about government cover-ups, black budgets, and UFOs. Phil stated in his lecture that in 1954, under the Eisenhower administration, the federal government decided to circumvent the Constitution and form a treaty with extraterrestrials. The treaty was called the 1954 Greata Treaty. Officials agreed that for extraterrestrial technology, the watchers could test their implanting techniques on select citizens. However, the extraterrestrials had to inform the government just who had been abducted and subject to implants. But slowly over time, the aliens altered the bargain, abducting and implanting thousands of people without reporting back to the government. In 1979, Phil was employed by the Morrison Knudsen Corporation. He was involved in building an addition to the deep underground military base at Dulce, New Mexico. The project at that time had drilled four holes in the desert that were to be linked together with tunnels. Philip's job was to go down the holes, check the rock samples, and recommend the explosives to deal with the particular rock. In the process, the workers accidentally opened a large artificial cavern, a secret base for the aliens known as the Greys. In the panic that occurred, 67 workers and military personnel were killed, with Phil Snyder being one of only three people to survive. Phil claimed the scars on his chest were caused by his being struck by an alien weapon. If Philip Snyder's claims are true, then his knowledge of the secret government, UFOs, and other information kept from the public could have serious repercussions to the world as we know it. In his lecture, Philip spoke on such topics as the Space Defense Initiative, black helicopters, railroad cars built with shackles to contain political prisoners, the World Trade Center bombing, and the secret black budget. At one of his lectures in 1995, Phil eerily had to say, Recently, I knew someone who lived near where I live in Portland, Oregon. He worked at Gunderson Steel Fabrication, where they make railroad cars. Now, I knew this fellow for the better part of 30 years, and he was kind of a quiet type. He came in to see me one day excited, and he told me they're building prisoner cars. He was nervous. Gunderson, he said, had a contract with the federal government to build 107,200 full-length railroad cars, each with 143 pairs of shackles. There are 11 subcontractors in this giant project. Supposedly, Gunnarsson got over $2 billion for the contract. Bethlehem Steel and other steel outfits are involved. He showed me one of the cars in the railroad yard in North Portland. He was right. If you multiply 107,200 times 143 times 11, you come up with about 15 million. This is the number of people who disagree with the federal government. And at number one, the most famous case of them all, the Roswell UFO incident. On the 8th of July, 1947, the Roswell Daily Record newspaper published a front page article with the headline, RAAF captures flying saucer on ranch in Roswell region. And the legend of America's most famous brush with aliens was born. Today, many conspiracy theorists consider the so-called Roswell incident to be one of the most conspicuous pieces of evidence that the U.S. government has covered up the existence of extraterrestrial life on Earth. But the Roswell story's position in the public imagination was far from immediate. For 31 years, the story was largely forgotten until the National Enquirer reported the original Roswell Daily Record story again. Following the publications of the new story, theories suggested that the government's incomplete account had been an attempt to cover the discovery of an alien spacecraft began to take root. 
Several people claim to have seen debris scattered over a wide area and at least one person reported seeing a blazing aircraft in the sky shortly before it crashed. But the key account came from a former mortician, Glenn Dennis, who claimed that in 1989 that a friend who worked as a nurse at the Roswell Army Airfield had accidentally walked into an examination room where doctors were bent over the bodies of three creatures. They apparently resembled humans, but with small bodies, spindly arms, and giant bald heads. In 1995, Ray Santilli, a London-based entrepreneur, released footage of an alien autopsy performed in Roswell in 1947. Experts immediately ridiculed the footage as a hoax, and he admitted that it was almost entirely fake. Nevertheless, Santilli insisted real footage existed, but due to its poor condition, he had been forced to recreate it. Critics have questioned the validity of various witnesses and pointed out that many claims over the years have come from friends of friends who supposedly saw something out of the ordinary. Still, many people continue to embrace the UFO theory and hundreds of curiosity seekers visit Roswell and the crash site every year. The Roswell incident remains the most popular UFO alien encounter of all time. So there you have it, five incidents of UFO and aliens that the world governments would rather you didn't know about. We hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching, and remember, the ways by which we arrive at knowledge are hardly less wonderful than the discovery of these things themselves.